All right, so this is the first of our uh, lectures on sociality and tr trying to figure out why species um, or individuals tend to group together. And so uh, this will actually be short, short and sweet as the first um, video. We just want to define it. Uh, it's the degree to which individuals in an animal population uh, tend to associate in social groups. Uh, the term uh, often used is gregarious, gregariousness and for uh, informed cooperative society. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is in, in this week's lecture is kind of look at that in other species. And then for the following week, um, uh, our last week, we're going to we're going to see how this um, associates with uh, human behavior. Uh, so sociality is a survival response uh, to evolutionary pressures. Um, so again, uh, the, the question of the day is what is the individual's purpose and that's survive and then pass off, uh, pass along um, offspring, kind of the name of the game. And so what we're going to do is an animal that exhibits a high degree of sociality is called a social animal. So there is various degrees of being social. And so what we want to do is look at group compositions. Um, why, why animals group together? And there's lots of different factors uh, involved. Uh, there are gender um, groups, uh, many ungulates, which is uh, another term for hoofstock, like the picture up above is a, is a caribou. Um, and, and elephants will form single sex groups um, where you've got elephants that with, with a matriarch and a bunch of uh, females and, and their offspring. And then the males are usually in a separate group. Uh, uh, or you'll have uh, bachelor groups. Uh, you'll see this in caribou. Uh, you'll see this in um, uh, um, uh, tule elk, uh, one of our local um, larger deer species up north. Uh, age also, uh, common ravens uh, will often form single age classes as juveniles. Uh, so you'll, you'll see them grouped together on how old they are. Uh, seasonal, um, some groups will group together um, uh, only under certain conditions and starlings, which is an introduced species, a European starling, but we have them here in Southern California and across the United States now. And what they'll do is they'll form large groups in fall and winter and uh, they do this uh, for protection, finding food, some of the same reasons we're going to talk about later. Um, but they'll become too ter territorial and uh, just kind of hang out in pairs during breeding season. Uh, many primates, parrots, hymenoptera, which are again are your bees, your wasps, your ants, um, and a lot of coral reef fish will group together um, in social groups and do this uh, for their whole life. And then relatedness. Um, we, we've talked about this before, but but you hang with your family, and uh, that uh, can create um, that can create uh, uh, opportunities to pass your genes to the next generation. Um, but then there's also large mixed flocks that uh, every individual actually. Um, I get some kind of benefit where we, you know, we talked about this with the Lucian effect, things like that. Uh, so what we want to do is kind of look at uh, sociality and how it uh, affects um, different species. And we're going to talk about uh, the costs and there are, uh, I'm sorry, the benefits. We'll start with benefits and there are many. So we're going to break that into two uh, different lectures. And then we have also costs and, and that'll be a single lecture. And then we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up. And some of the stuff you've seen before. So we're going to try to tie it all together um, uh, as we come closer to the end of the semester. And so we'll stop the share and stop the recording.